At approximately 1.30 p.m. on September 19, 1991, the German couple Helmut Simon, 67, and Erika Simon, 64, were hiking in the Ötzal Alps near the Italian-Austrian border. The two were enjoying the breathtaking scenery of the Ötztal Alps at an altitude of 3,200 meters. They decided to take a shortcut off the trail when they noticed something odd sticking out from a snowfield. They went closer to see what it was. At a first glance, it looked like a doll sticking out from the glacier. Upon further inspection, however, it was clear this was a human corpse. The Simons took a picture of it and began their descent to report the find to the authorities. Both the German couple and the authorities all thought that the body belonged to a modern man who had recently suffered a deadly accident. The body was taken to the Institute of Forensic Medicine in Innsbruck, where archaeologist Konrad Spindler determined that the body found in the ice was not of recent origin. It was around 5,300 years old, from the late Neolithic period, Together with the Iceman were an almost complete setup of his belongings. His clothes, a copper axe, bow and quiver, a flint dagger, and a backpack, just to mention a few. After seven years of study at Innsbruck University, the body, now nicknamed Ötzi the Iceman, was transported to South Tyrol Museum of Archaeology, where Ötzi was encased in a special made chamber which helps preserving the body. Visitors can get a glimpse of the Iceman through a small window. The cause of Ötzi's death has been a matter of intense speculation. For years, the prevailing theory behind his death was that he died from hypothermia after having encountered bad weather. In 2001, however, a chest x-ray and a CT scan most probably solved the cause of his death. Deeply sunk in his left shoulder was found a flint arrowhead that would have hit several large blood vessels. The entrance hole is also visible on his skin, a sign that this was a fresh injury. The arrow hit would have caused him to die in solitude on the mountaintop, bleeding to death. His body was dry by a warm breeze and shortly thereafter covered with snow. Maybe he was able to escape his murderer as all his equipment was left on the scene. Despite being the most intensively studied natural mummy in the history of archaeology, the events surrounding his demise is still shrouded in mystery. But there are a few signs that can tell us what actually happened. Ötzi died in a rocky hollow on the ridge of a mountain at an altitude of 3,200 meters. On both sides of the ridge, steep slopes leads down to the valleys below, one to the north and another to the south. The vertical climb in altitude from the valley below is 2,000 meters or 6,500 feet. Anyone having hiked in the mountains know that this is a considerably tough climb, even without gear. Ötzi was fully equipped and would have struggled up the mountain to get there, being injured or not. Ötzi was also an elderly man for his time. He was in his 40s and had several physical injuries. He was not in good health. More than 400 artifacts of his belongings were found at the scene. A detailed topographic map of the artifacts was created 20 years after his discovery. This indicates that the items were originally not scattered. They most probably were scattered by the elements after Ötzi died in the gully. Analysis of the contents of his gut indicated that he had indeed made a climb in the hours or the day before he was murdered. He ate ibex meat, a type of wild goat common in this region, and some plant food in the day leading up to the climb. His very last meal was red deer and some cereals. Evidence indicates that Ötze began his journey in the southern valley in springtime. He made a climb of 2,000 meters in altitude, most of the climb probably without being injured. If he had been shot, such a climb would have been even more difficult, but it's not impossible. He reached the ridge of the mountain almost exactly at the present-day border between Italy and Austria. He was now in a desolate, glacier-riven landscape. The gully where he was found seems ideal as a shelter from the elements. We can conclude almost for certain that the arrow hit is what finally killed him, 
But where was he shot? Did his enemies caught up with him at this very spot? Or did they wait in an ambush for him to arrive? What we know is that nothing of value was taken from him. Not his axe, his knife or arrows. Or his yet unfinished bow. This indicates that the murderer was not present at this exact spot. He must have been hit close by, using his last energy and aided with the rush of adrenaline such a hit would have caused. He managed to outrun or hide from the perpetrator, but eventually bled to death alone in the gully. Given that it is not likely he could have made a 2000 meter climb with an arrow in his back, he must have been shot close to where he was found. Maybe at a slightly lower altitude, his murderers were waiting for him along a well-known trail. And when he went by, they were able to take a good aim and make a perfect shot in his back. He briefly looked over his shoulder. He saw them and he ran for his life with the arrow shaft protruding from his back, eventually ending up in the rock hollow. Perhaps he was following a well-known trail that connected the valley in the south with the valley in the north. His murderer knew this was the trail he was taking, and they waited for Ötzi to arrive. Hi there, and welcome to the woods. The endless riddle of Ötzi the Iceman. What happened? How did he end up in this rocky hollow. There are different theories about what happened and uh, I've covered them a few theories in another video. But after doing some more research, um, well I'm not an expert on this, I'm completely amateurish on this subject, but I've done some research and uh, it one, one theory uh, says that he uh, was sacrificed. He was sacrificed. He was carried up the mountain or walked up the mountain. And he was sacrificed. He was killed in a ritual manner. What I find very hard with that theory is that, as we know, it's a climb from the valley below. It's a climb in altitude. Um, of 2,000 meters and that is a tough climb. It's a tough climb to carry a dead body up there if it was killed in a valley and it still is a very tough and very impractical climb if he was sacrificed. There are plenty of other sites below this place that uh, he could have been sacrificed. So I don't see, based on the altitude, the practicality behind that is not, it makes no sense to me. So I think that is out of the, um, out of the um, equation. And uh, I mean, the, the, the arrow hits and the fact that he had his belongings and all that, it doesn't point towards a, a ritual sacrifice. Then we have another common theory about his importance in society. That he was uh, some kind of high status person. And that is mostly based on his belongings. He had this axe, he had this, this copper axe, which was um, probably valuable at the time. But I don't think it was uncommon. I don't, I don't think it was uncommon to have such, a, um, such an item and a bow and quiver. I mean, this was in the, uh, the late Neolithic time. Um, copper was common. It was valuable, but it was, it was commonly used, um, like iron during the, the Iron Age. So uh, I don't think, I think it was a, well, an average Neolithic man. That's what I think he was. Not, not some kind of 
chief or tribe leader or something like that. I think it was um, um, a man on a mission, <laughs> definitely, uh, with his gear. He was heading somewhere for some reason and he was equipped. But I don't think he was this high status person that, that some, um, well, that's a theory, but I don't believe in that theory. My belief, not saying in any way that I'm more right than anyone else, <laughs> it's just my theory, is that um, he was in some kind of dispute with some person or persons, maybe a family or another, another family maybe. And uh, maybe it was over cattle or land or property or something like that. Or maybe it was, uh, well, he was in a, in a dispute with, with, with someone that was angry at him, angry with, with him. And it got, it got to the point that he had enemies that wanted him dead. So one day he was walking up the mountain on, um, on a trip, not primarily for hunting, but to reach the other valley, the valley to the north. And he followed a, a trail which we have no evidence um, of, but I think there were trails back then uh, connecting the two valleys. And he, he, wa he walked along this, this well-known trail. And the perpetrator, the person guilty for his, his murder, knew he was walking there. And he hid behind a rock. There is a, this is a very rocky area, so there are plenty of sites everywhere where you can hide. And when Ötzi passed on his way on the trail, the murderer could uh, aim and make a good shot in his back. There were no uh, witnesses. It was just Ötzi and this, uh, this man he was um, in a dispute with. Ötzi, uh, he turned around and uh, he ran. And the murderer also ran. He saw that Ötzi didn't die in the first, on the first hit. So he ran after him and uh, eventually Ötzi was able to escape this, um, this man and he came up on the ridge and he, and he, he, he hid in this gully. But uh, the arrow was, had severed sever, several blood vessels so he's bleeding he was bleeding and he was breathing heavy and he he felt like this this is not this is not going well and uh, he died he died there where he was found in the gully and i don't think the murderer ever checked him out. Maybe he, he did that. Maybe the murderer looked at him and see, well, he's dead. But he did not pick his axe or his belongings because then his belonging would, would be recognized uh, in the society. So um, I think the murderer got away. He got away with murder, <laughs> this man. So that's, um, well, that's my theory. And it's one theory of many, but I think it's, um, it's a plausible theory.
And I think the most puzzling thing here is that he was found at this altitude. So, I know uh, many of you have had a lot of theories, and I think all of us have a theory of what happened, but please, please have your uh, opinions about this in the comment section. And um, it's a very interesting, interesting case, and um, maybe someday we'll know what happened. Now I'll have my coffee.